What is up crew, it's your boy KSAM, and on today's video, we're actually going to be going over the various submissions from the community, and I will be doing my best to take their art into that next level, while also giving feedback on what they can do for future assignments. If you guys are interested in stuff like this, you guys can always check out my streams, or you could actually check out the After School Art Crew, which you'll find on my Discord. But with that being said, let's get started on all of these submissions. Uh, this right here, I'm trying to remember who submitted this one. I forgot, but I do remember that they were particularly having some questions about clothing and I think the forms, especially I think the foreshortening here of the character. First of all, beautiful, beautiful work. Mayhem did it. Thanks, Mayhem. Let's talk about this one. All right. Let's take a look at this awesome submission here. Really good forms, really good clothing, nice dynamic shot. If I were to break this down, which we will do right now. I think we'll find that a lot of it is pretty cohesive. Like, I think you can tell just from looking at this that the person who created this did a really good job of researching and really trying to understand the pose overall. I'm not going to look at the composition because that's not the focus of my craft, but I will say the composition is great too, and it works really well with the perspective that the artist uh, chose. But you can kind of really tell. Look at this. Just from the simple forms here, you can tell that the artist really understood the overall pose of the character, right? They did a great job here of, of capturing that. And again, I wouldn't be surprised if they did draw this pose a couple times to really understand what's going on. Now, let's kind of get a little bit lower here. And I will say that towards this portion of the clothing, we do lose out a little bit on what might be going on uh, with this skirt portion. Now, if you take a look at how the hips are working, let's just say she has some really wider hips. Let's just follow through on, on, on the design here. Um, you'll kind of find that this leg almost kind of feels a little awkward because the leg here kind of goes out this way, but it looks to me like we, we have a little bit of the shadow right here of this leg being hidden. And so what ends up happening, I feel like, is it almost gives the illusion that this leg right here is actually really tiny. We have like a tiny leg here, and then we have like a really thick leg here. And I know that a lot of that is because of the shadow, right? And so let's make sure compositionally speaking that when we do have that, right, let's pay attention to how we're utilizing those shadows. And so that way we can still keep and retain the volume of these very nice thick thighs that this uh, forest lady has, you know? Good little volume there. Again, I'm not trying to change your forms too much, but I want I want to make sure we retain that. And once we have really a good understanding of this stuff, this is where understanding how we can simplify the clothing will really help out as well too. Because I think what's maybe happening here is when you have, for example, the fabric of this character, notice how yours kind of goes down like this and it's very parallel, right? And what ends up happening is when you have a lot of too many parallel equidistant flows like this, it can easily kill the drawing and make it feel flat. And so when we do a draw over, I'll show you in a minute what, what it'll look like. Uh, but before we get into that, let's also address here the arm. So now when we have here the arm, notice how the arm is going to go here. We have here some good foreshortening here. And I think what's happening here is if you want, I think there's, there's going to be two solutions I'm going to give you. If you want the arm to be at this distance from here to here on the shoulder, I think you're going to have to make this hand and this portion of the arm wider and bigger so that it's more in frame. Otherwise, if you want the hand to still be in this size, you're going to have to lengthen that arm out a little bit more. So let's go ahead and let's keep all these beautiful little drawings I just did. And let's actually now apply those changes to this illustration. I think for this arm, the, the fix actually is pretty easy, hopefully. Uh, again, the main thing I want to do for you is let's kind of widen that arm up a bit more and let's also make that hand bigger as well too. So we're really going to do, again, there's like, there's two options, right? It's either you go in and you make this hand bigger to make it match the, the position that you want it to, or you extend it out this way to make it look a little bit longer, uh, the way that you again, wanted it to, right? But all right, let's take a look at that. Just from moving a few things around, right? Let's look at the before and after. Ready? This is the before. This is the after. You see that? That uh, looks good. But there you go. Hopefully that helps. Really quick, really quick. So somebody in the chat asked, how do you understand when to exaggerate a form without breaking the anatomy? I think, again, it comes down to a lot of personal taste. 
but you can use, for example, the perspective, right? So here, notice how the perspective of this character is going like this. And so you can actually use a couple landmarks. Uh, the first one right here is imagine you have this as the upper arm, right? If you took this upper arm down, do, 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 all the way to the ground right here, and actually used science and math, you can actually check that the that the length of this arm and let's say the center here of this character, if you were to rotate that, boop, 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 like that, you can then figure out and be like, oh yeah, that's about a good length, right? Similarly, let's say you take this arm right here, the, the upper, or sorry, the, the forearm portion there, like that, right? And you go, boop, 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 bring that all the way down right here. And obviously it's extended past the page. But if you rotate that here, boop, 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 boop. Wow. Would you look at that? It's about the same distance. So that's actually what I'm thinking about in my head when I'm actually doing these things. Um, but obviously I'm not applying that because uh, that's a lot of work to do for everything. So you kind of just have to build intuition uh, when you're designing these things. But okay, uh, we have another submission here. And I think the main thing that this artist was uh, talking about was they felt like maybe the head was a little bit off. So let's go ahead and maybe take a look at this character's head, which by the way, the overall drawing is great. I love the blockiness. I love the shape design. I love the colors. Let's maybe take a look now at what might be going on here. So if we were to just take the, the form here, of the character, right? And again, form is so important. If we just take the form here of this character and just take the outline of what we have, something that you're going to notice right away is this take the ends of the eyes and you line them up they're going to go this way take the nose and they're going to go this way take the mouth and they're going to go this way and notice here how this eye is a little bit off right and also the brows so you have your two separate components the eyes and the brow combo are going this way and the mouth and the nose combo are going in a completely different direction but if you take a look at your face generally speaking, they should be pretty parallel to each other. And so this is actually a very easy fix. Let's do it right now like that. And then let's make sure it's a little bigger too. And that will, that will already in itself address uh, the vertical issue, right? But there's actually one more thing that I would recommend too, is don't just pay attention to the uh, vertical uh, perspective or not the yeah the vertical perspective and the proportions but let's also take a look at the horizontal right so here i feel like if we actually pushed back check this out if we actually pushed back this eye just a little bit we can actually give a little bit more breathing room there what ends up happening is we can now go in here and we actually create some separation there between these eyes. So that way they're roughly about uh, the same distance, right? Apart. You see that right there? So I'll actually show you guys the before and after. So you'll understand what I mean. Before, after. Before, after. You see what I did there? Now when you zoom out. Voila. Chef Boyardee. Before, after. And then also flip the canvas. Before, after uh, but all right let's move on um we're not we're not over yet we've done a lot today it's crazy this is this is way more than last time and i i again i genuinely hope you guys find these valuable this was i think the biggest reason uh this was the biggest reason why i made the after school art crew was so that i could give you guys dedicated feedback like this give you guys actionable things that you can take home with you to level up your art uh, and do it in a way that is, you know, genuine and also uh, personal. Ooh, all right. Um, speaking of, of feedback and stuff, we have here the gesture and let's do a gesture one. We haven't really done one that's like focused most, mostly on gesture. I think here the forms are good. I think Ray Treya, who I'm, I'm pretty sure this is Ray Treya's, has been watching my streams for a while. They're actually one of my editors, if you guys didn't know. And so I know for a fact they've seen every single one of my boot camp videos because they've had to edit it and they've had to scrub through every single every single uh, thing that I've said. So I know for a fact their forms are good. Like you, you've locked in on your forms. I think what's happening now is you want to really get that rhythm, right? So let's talk about rhythm. And I think here... 
let's talk about how you can utilize rhythm and overlap to really sell the gesture of your character so like right here i would take that arm and just actually rotate it back and i think that would really help uh sell that gesture a little bit more of this character right Whee! um maybe here this arm is going forward into space like that um maybe here i would bend that knee a little bit and let's kind of like get comfortable with that with that bend and how would that look how would that translate on the board right so the board here uh would maybe be effectively the same board but now it'd be kind of like further back here and then by doing that now this girl is surfing up right Something like that. And so I think by doing stuff like this, where you still lock in the forms, but let's get comfortable with the idea now of overlap. And that will go such a long way. And you'll see here, I'm not even using high details, right? I'm using just gesture lines to kind of showcase this concept to you. Um, because I think you, again, have the forms good. Your forms are great. So I don't need to correct you on your forms. Um, I just need to give you, I think, more encouragement, right? more uh, confidence there you go have confidence in yourself to be able to push push these forms further and we'll do one more example of that as well too uh, i think this is another good example right here where let's just take a look at that gesture and i think here for that gesture right let's like let's just really bring that arm forward right and also again utilize straights versus curves with your uh with your design right straights versus curves uh, and then here let's go down this way the hips are going to go up here and let's bring that knee up. Let's bring that knee up, man. This guy is Muay thai -ing. So we got to we gotta flex. He's got to let the people know that he's a boss out here, right? And let's have that gesture. Let's have that gesture flow. So if that leg is doing that, let's bring this leg back. And I think by doing it like that, we actually have that gesture flowing a little bit more, right? So now we can kind of follow this gesture a little bit as it hits this character. So there you go. That's that's the advice I would give. Have more confidence in overlapping your forms. Have more confidence in pushing these things. And I really feel like it'll go a long way, especially with the good foundation you have in the um, in the forms. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, if you guys did enjoy today's video, make sure to like and subscribe and consider joining the after school art crew if you want to get your own stuff critiqued out here. But with that, I'll see you guys next time and happy drawings. Like he's really like mansplaining super hard. Did I say mans mansplaining? <laughs> he's mansplaining how he's manspreading.